suggest to you that what he is really saying is, go, because nothing in your past can hold you. Go forward, because nobody can hold blame and shame over you in a way that it incapacitates your future. Go forward, because no matter whether you did that or not, I'm sure you did some stuff like everybody else did some stuff. But in relationship with me is grace and mercy and love. And don't you let anybody stop you from moving forward in your life because of something they tried to hold over your head that happened in the past. This was the church that held the first faith community meeting in response to Michael Brown. And I'm saying to you today, my sister... If it had not been for an interfaith movement, we would not have been able to accomplish what we have accomplished, and we definitely wouldn't be able to go You're further. approaching this anniversary of Michael Brown's death, an anniversary that somehow the image that we used a year ago was that it, it pulled the bandage off an old wound and with it came the scar. And we saw that beneath that scar there was a festering sore, the sore of racism that was eating away in, in, at, our, at our nation, the heart and soul of our nation, but was also killing our precious children. I think that the move for justice and the move for reconciliation must start in the house of faith because the breakdown of justice and the breakdown of reconciliation is rooted in the house of faith. That's what I believe. I believe that on Sundays or on Saturdays or on Fridays, we are as segregated as we could possibly be. And that segregation carries over into the lives of those that we minister to. So when, when Mike Brown was shot down on August 9th, it was a Shabbos, it was a Saturday. We had just finished services, but somehow I think we all knew this was different. This was different because there was a kid lying in the street for four and a half hours with his mother unable to hold him. I can't even think about it now. Every time I see her, you know, I, 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 that's just not right. And so when the call came out to show up on Sunday, of course we went. Of course we went. And there were many CRC members that went that day, too. We stood in front of the police department that day. And, you know, it was very interesting because it might have been the first day that I met I think I knew Tracy Blackman, Reverend Tracy Blackman, before that. But that was the first day I heard her speak. We talk about a gracious and forgiving God. We talk about a loving God. We talk about a God that restores and repairs. But yet, somehow, we have failed to actualize that in our own lives. You know, no matter what side of the argument you're on, we all have people who worship. And whether you worship my God, or you worship another God, or you worship some variation in between, or you say there is no God, there is something that you worship. Until we as people of faith can get beyond our differences enough to respect one another. We don't have to all agree, but we do have to respect one another. And when we can do that, then that permeates out into the communities. Reverend Tracy invited people to her church and um, she asked me to speak. And the governor was there and, and Claire McCaskill was there and all the police chiefs were there and they were all there and they were all sitting up on the, on the, you know, the altar. And she asked me to speak. And I got to speak. And I got to speak truth to power. And I got to call it like I saw it. And I said something like, um, you know, we know what we have to do. And we know that this has been a problem for a long time. You know, and, um, and it's time. 
It's time to change things. It's time to change this world. I think things have changed in St. Louis on an individual basis. Um, relationships have been formed. Um, collaborations have started that were not there before and possibly would not have been there. We've had courageous conversations about taboo subjects that we really wouldn't talk about across lines. Individually, we've made lots of strides, but collectively, as a city and a region, uh, people are still dying. So there's a lot of work that we have to do. And so we all felt that pain, but I think there was also some hope because we didn't just sit back and take it this time. We rose up. With our young people leading us, we rose up and we pleaded. And we somehow dared to believe that because we knew his name, that something would change. That maybe never again would there be such a senseless killing. But then there was Kajimi Powell. Then there was Von Derek Myers. Then there was Tamir Rice and Eric Garner. And the sore stayed open. And somehow we still believe that because we know their names now, that something was going to change. And then Sandra Bland. Preach, preach. I live in a country where a 28-year-old black woman who was on her way to a brand new job and a brand new start, having finished school, she was educated, we said that was important. She came from a good family, we said that was important. She was raised in the church, we said that was important. And yet, for a, a failure to put on a signal light, was found hanging in a cell. Knowing the names didn't seem to be changing things. Be'ed Hanan, this portion is called. Because in this portion, Moses doesn't just pray. He teaches us about pleading. He teaches us about begging. He teaches us about what it's going to take to really change things now. Justice is what love looks like in public. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. yeah. It's justice when you see somebody else down and you really act like Jesus instead of one who wants to pick up stones and throw them. Mm -hmm. It's justice when you investigate with the hermeneutic of suspicion the stories that you are told about situations and people and don't always assume the worst. Yeah. Yeah. It's justice yes. when you lift up the one who has lost their voice and is bowed down because the burden of shame has become too much. Yeah. I invite you to justice.